Good morning. Welcome to Biomeda United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor. Thank you for being with us this morning. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for this Sunday morning, a time when we gather together to be in your presence, to worship you, to offer you words of thanksgiving and entrust our concerns to you, to hear your word read, to hear your word proclaimed, and to be in holy fellowship with one another in this space. Be with us now as we worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 24 this morning. Psalm, the book of Psalms is in the first in the Old Testament, and Psalm 24. And I'm on the wrong page again today. My apologies. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the suns, on the seas, and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me this morning? Let us bow. At the end of my prayer, I will invite you to join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Sunday morning where we can choose when and where we worship in this great nation of ours. In this place, we're virtual so that others and that are in the church and others that are not in the church can also worship with us. We give you thanks for your great love, your unconditional love that loves us no matter what we've ever done, that loved us before we were born. Your invitational love that invites us to follow your son, Jesus, and to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And your transformational love that brings us into a closer relationship with you and transforms us to be more like you every day. We give you thanks for your great love, so great that you gave your only son to come to this earth as a baby in a manger who drew to, grew to adulthood and taught us the ways to live in relationship with you. We thank you that he gave his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you for raising him on the third day after his death, giving us eternal life with you. We're thankful for all of the ones who step into harm's way every day. And we ask your protection and blessing on them, the military, the firefighters, the law enforcers, the first responders, all of those who step into the aftermath after tornadoes, floods, wildfires, blizzards, hurricanes. And we entrust them to you too along with all of those who have been on the front lines for the pandemic and the COVID virus in the last year and continuing now as the variants are showing up and COVID cases are still on the rise in some places around the world. We give you thanks for these healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, the staffs of the clinics and the hospitals. We give you thanks for them and those who repair the infrastructure in the aftermath of all that comes. We entrust them all to your care now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John in the New Testament, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9a. If you'll take out your Bibles and follow along with me in the Gospel of John in the New Testament, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9a, beginning in verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me again? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever not done something because you feel helpless and hopeless? Have you ever not done something because you did something you shouldn't have done? Have you ever, for no reason, felt hopeless and helpless? Have you ever wondered why the man in today's scripture never asked for help to get into the pool? I wonder why he just sat there every time I read this passage. Perhaps... We should consider a different way of looking at the man at the Sheep Gate Pool. Back in old Jerusalem, down by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool that was called Bethesda. It was no ordinary pool. Folks used to say that from time to time, an angel of the Lord came down and turned it into a health spa. A lot of sick and hurting people came to this pool because they said, if you were the first one in the water when it got stirred up, you'd be healed of whatever ailed you. It got to be something like a first century run for the roses, with everybody dashing for the pool as soon as the angel lifeguard blew his whistle. But in this case, it was not last one in as a rotten egg, but the first one in gets the heavenly prize. The pool was more crowded than the beach on Memorial Day weekend. Now there was a man named Ephraim who had been sick for 38 years. And as Jesus was passing by the pool, he noticed the man, and he knew, he knew that he had been there a long time. He knew he should not heal the man, because it was the Sabbath, and after all, it'd be against all those blue laws. But he did decide to pay a pastoral call on the man, so he went over to say hi. Except Jesus was never really one to make small talk, and so the first thing he said was, do you want to be made well? The man didn't know who Jesus was, but he was happy for the company. He told Jesus he wanted to be made whole, but he discovered he couldn't do it on his own. He kind of hoped somebody would come help him to get into the pool. Now Ephraim was sure that this nice man was going to stick around and help him into the water when it all got all stirred up. But Jesus surprised him by passing up the race for the pool together. Instead, he gave him a simple command, pick up your mat and walk. And the man did. But then there was a problem. It was a Sabbath, and there wasn't to be any carrying on on holidays. In fact, there wasn't to be any carrying on of anything. There were some people there who let it be known that they were not happy with what Jesus had done. 
He said, you're carrying things too far. The healing, the man replied, no, the pallet. Who told you to do that? It's not my fault. He told me to. Well, it wasn't long before the healed man met up with Jesus again in the temple. And Jesus said, you really showed your new character when you carried that bed. But remember, getting rid of your sinful ways doesn't just stop with getting rid of your pallet. Ephraim didn't understand. He kept the healing, but he turned in the healer. He didn't know there was more to being well than walking. After 38 years, this man's problem had become a way of life. Nobody had ever helped him. He had no hope of ever being healed. His situation looked hopeless to him and maybe to others. But no matter how trapped you feel in your illness or I feel trapped in an illness, God can minister to yours and my deepest needs. We mustn't let a problem or a hardship cause us to lose hope in God because God may have special work for you or me to do despite our condition or even because of it. You see, in the early 90s, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, known as MS. And I didn't feel sorry for myself. I was happy to have a diagnosis because it had been 15 years coming. It's sometimes hard to diagnose. And as I lived on with MS, there came a time when I felt God's nudging on my shoulder to come do some ministry with him. And so I did a few things like teach Sunday school and help with Bible school and, and serve on committees and do things like that in the church. But God just kept nudging me and I kept thinking, but God, I have multiple sclerosis. I'm not able to do anything more. Well, I listened to God and I realized that if I said yes to whatever it was God wanted me to do, that he would equip me to do it because of my trust and faith in him. Despite my condition, I could barely walk part of the time. I had no energy. I didn't walk straight. It was, it was a difficult time in my life. But in the last six and a half years, my multiple sclerosis has been in full remission. And I know it's because God gave it to me as a gift and a blessing to help me get back to him in a deeper relationship. You can do the same. But back to that day when Jesus told the man to pick up his pallet and walk. According to the Pharisees there, if one carried a mat on the Sabbath, it was considered work and was against the law. It didn't break any Old Testament laws, but the Pharisees interpreted God's command to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy found in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. And it was one of the many rules that the Pharisees added to the Old Testament laws. This man had not walked for 38 years, and he had been healed. But the Pharisees were more concerned about their little rule about not picking up and carrying a mat on the Sabbath than the life and health of this human being. The Jewish leaders saw both a mighty miracle of healing and a broken rule, and they focused on the broken rule and disregarded the miracle that had happened. Why? Because the broken rule was more important to the Pharisees than a miracle of God's healing of a human. We're that way sometimes, aren't we? We get so caught up in our own rules and man-made arrangements that we forget that people are involved. This man had been lame or paralyzed and suddenly he could walk. This was a great miracle, but he needed an ever greater miracle to have his sins forgiven. He was thrilled to be physically healed, but he didn't understand what was important 
He needed to seek God's forgiveness for his sins so that he could be spiritually healed. Friends, the greatest love that you and I will ever receive comes from God. Yet many of us do not fully understand how deep and how wide God's love is, nor that it is a gift. God's forgiveness is also a gift. God gave his only son, Jesus, who gave his life on the cross so that who, all who believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Have you accepted God's gracious gift of love and forgiveness? Have you asked God for his gift of forgiveness? All of us are sinners. All of us need to ask for forgiveness. Jesus' death on the cross was for the forgiveness of our sins, but we also have to own up to them and ask God for forgiveness. None of us should ever neglect God's gracious offer of forgiveness. To accept his gift of love and forget, receive his forgiveness are the greatest things we can ever experience. God loves you no matter what you have ever done or ever will do. Come to him now. Come to him now. Let us pray. Holy God, we know that we are all sinners. Open our eyes and our hearts to accept your gift of love and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you feel helpless and hopeless? Seek the one who can give you that help and that hope. Come to Jesus. Accept his invitation to follow him and begin a new life in him today. It's that simple. You can do it right where you are. Just say, Jesus, I want to follow you. Forgive me of my sins. Take his hand and follow him and begin a new life today. Won't you do it now? We receive the benediction. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. Everywhere, everywhere you may go, surrounded by the love of God and life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with me today here at Biomedia United Methodist Church. Virtually. Not in the church, but it is worship together. I hope you come back again on Thursday at 12 noon for a time of hope and prayer for our world. And again next Sunday at 11 o'clock for worship virtually. You can find us on YouTube at Biomedia United Methodist Church and on Facebook at Biomedia UMC. Until we meet again, may God bless you. Until next time, I'm Reverend Ann Nelson, pastor of Biomedia United Methodist Church. Amen. Amen.